Hey guys, this is Mr. Young. I just wanted to uh, show you guys how to plot, or essentially create those, uh, that SIR model that you saw in the number file video. So we're gonna use the same program that, that uh, was used in the video. We're gonna use GeoGebra. So we need to go to our browser and then type in geogebra.org. There you go. And then down here in the middle, we've got GeoGebra Classic. So we're gonna click that and use GeoGebra Classic. Cool, so now what we need to do first, let's get our window set up. So up here in the top right, this little triangle thing. Click that, click settings, and then I'm gonna change my X min max, Y min max. All right, so it gives us a nice little window to see our model. So X min, let's start at like negative one, sure. And this will go all the way over to, uh, let's say 50 for now. Well, let's do 20 for now. All right, Y min, let's do, uh, zero, I guess, and then go all the way up to two. Boom. Close that. Cool. Move it over a little bit. There we go. That didn't really change, did it? Hold on one sec. Let me go back here. We said we wanted to go all the way up to two. Two. There we go. That's what I want. Better. All right. So. What we need to do is create those parameters that they used in the video. So we need, um, for our SIR model, we need an initial susceptible population. So my S starts, we're gonna use 0 0.99, right? My initial um, infected uh, population, I starts, is gonna be about 1%, 0 0.01, 1% of the population. And then the number of recovered at time zero, my initial recovery quantity is gonna be zero. No one's recovered yet, because it's time zero. Right, and we also have a transmission rate, which is going to be 3.2. And we also have our recovery rate, which is going to be 0.23 for now. These are all changeable, right? Um, and then uh, we also have uh, the T max, the max time, because GeoGebra needs a, uh, a maximum time for uh, the model to know when to stop graphing. So I would say it's one for now. Sweet. And then we can just click these little dots, dot, dot, it drops it in for us in our window. Perfect. All right, so let's go down here and we're gonna also type our, uh, we're gonna describe how the susceptible population, the infected population, and the recovered population are changing over time. And the way that you do that is using a differential equation. And if you remember a differential, a differential equation, is just an equation, right? You guys know equations. It's an equation that has a derivative in it, at least one derivative in it. That's a differential equation, right? It has one derivative in it at least one derivative. So we've seen those all during the first semester. That's all we did during the first semester was technically differential equations where you say y prime equals two x or something like that, right? That's a differential equation because it has that y prime in it, which is the derivative, right? So we're gonna type three differential equations. We've got s prime, right? And we're gonna say that's a function of t, s, i, and r. All right, um, s prime is just gonna describe how the susceptible population is changing. So it's decreasing, right? As more people get infected, there are less people susceptible to the, to the disease because they're becoming infected. They're transitioning from susceptible to infected. So it's decreasing. So we say negative, let's, that's what the transmission rate is for. Transmission rate times S times I. Right, and then why do they use S and I? You can get into that a little bit more. I'm not gonna talk about that too much, but this right here, what I type it in on its own, would create a logistic graph. All right, um, and that looks kind of like a big S. Um, that's on its own, but we're gonna add in a couple other dis differential equations to create a system of equations, which kind of changes the shape of that. All right, so this is just what I've typed in here is a really basic um, model for any type of growth or decay. And in this case, we're talking about um, the decay of this susceptible population as the disease spreads. All right, so we've got our S prime. How does the number of infected change? All right, that's dependent on T, S, I, R. How does that change? Well, it changes, it's basically the same as the susceptible population, right? Because once you are, once you are not susceptible anymore, now you're infected. So the infected population grows at the same rate, times S times I, right? But then it also, we also subtract out the number of people who've recovered, which is R prime, of T, S, I, R. Boom. All right, so then we come down to here. Of 
course it doesn't like that. Um, let's do our <clears throat> type in anything else. All right. Let's delete that for a second. Let's do R prime first. R prime. R prime. T S I R. Right? That's going to be my recovery rate. But then it's so my recovery rate is 0.23. That's 23%. All right. So let's say 23% of the number infected because you have to be infected in order to be recovered, right? So the 23% is of the number infected. So recovery rate times I is how the number of recovered changes per day and increases. All right, boom, got that. Now let's go back in and type in my I prime. F-T-S-I-R. And we'll say, what was that? That was gonna be the transmission rate times S times I, and then back out the R prime of T S I R. Boom. Got it. Nice. Okay, so now what we're going to do is the final step, which is this N solve ODE. Boom. Hit enter on that. And then what we're going to do is hit delete. And we're going to type in a list in squiggly brackets of our differential equations. We have S prime, we have R prime, and we have, uh, let's do, let's do S I R. I prime, and then we have R prime. Go over to the right. Deletes. This is going to be uh, the initial e the initial x value, which is time across the x-axis down here. We have time. So, just in the video, we're going to say zero is the initial x value. This is the list of initial y value. So, clear that and put this in squiggly brackets. That was my s start. Hold on, put that in brackets. S start, i start, and r start. Let me drag this out a little bit more so we can see what I'm actually doing. There we go. All right, to the right, and then the final x coordinate. This is why we created the t max. Boom, hit enter. Nice, it created a bunch of stuff for me. So, does it work? Is the question up over here? There we go. All right, it's creating those graphs. So, what we need to do is kind of adjust our parameters. This t max right here, I'm going to go up here on these three dots and go to settings. I'm going to say the min, I don't want it to go down below zero. This is the time function, right? And the max, let's make that 20 for right now. Increment 1, sweet. Alright, so now my T max, I can go a little bit farther and see kind of where it goes. Sweet! And like what happened in the video, there is no color to this, so let's add some color. Let's go down here, um, and then we can say, click on these three dots, boom. Let's change the name. Oh, one sec. That's not what I wanted. I wanted this guy. Let's click on these three dots. There we go. Numerical integral one now. I want to call that, that was my S, right? Put color right here. Let's make that blue. Uh, that should be good. All right, let's go to the second one. Settings, numerical integral two. Now I want to call that I, that's the number infected. Color, let's make that red. Nice red color, sweet. And then the last one, numerical integral three. Let's call that the number recovered, R. And we'll change the color to green. Boom, green. All right, so, look at this guy. Nice, we got a nice little graph here we can play around with, all right? So I can drag this slider, go all the way back to time zero, and kind of see how things behave, how things turn out based on how I said these populations should behave right here in my differential equations, right? I said that the susceptible population should decrease, right? It's just negative. It's going to decrease as more and people get infected, right? So as time goes on, you see it drops very quickly, right? The susceptible population as the infected population, boom, zooms up, right? Because they're transferring. But it doesn't zoom up at the exact same rate because we're backing out this, this number of recovered uh, people as well. Right, So we can move that along and kind of see how it behaves based on our differential equations. They determine the movement of these graphs, or essentially the movement of this disease with the population and how uh, our population reacts to it in terms of susceptible, infected, and recovered. All right, so, and you can also play with uh, these different rates here as well, the transmission rate, like what was discussed in the video. Well, what happens to this curve? This is the curve that you hear about in the news all the time, this red curve, the number of infected. 
So we want to flatten it. Well, how do you flatten it? There's a couple different ways. You could decrease the transmission rate, so it's not going to transmit as quickly, right? Uh, so we can decrease the transmission rate. Well, how do you decrease that transmission rate? You can see what happens there, right? That curve starts to get flatter and flatter and flatter. Now we're at like 20% of the population is affected max at any given at that one time, which is much better than the what was it initially 80% almost that we had at 3.2, right? So decrease the transmission rate, and we can also extend our time. We can make it go out even farther if we change the settings here. Let's change the settings now. Make it go all the way out to 50. 50. You know, this doesn't like to listen to me sometimes. Where is my T-Rex? Excuse my dog. She likes to bark. There we go. All right. There we go. Now we can go out farther. All right, so you can see at a certain point, you decrease the transmission rate to where it won't even, uh, not even everybody will be, not everybody will become infected. A susceptible population doesn't decrease down to zero, right? So if you increase that transmission rate, right, then you can see with a susceptible population, yeah, eventually almost everybody's going to be infected, right? Decrease it. <laughs> decrease it. There we go. Then not everybody's going to become infected. We can really flatten that curve and decrease the impact that this has on our hospitals and the medical community, right, our medical resources. So you can play around with that. Once you've gotten that, that graph, you can play around with it yourself. And then you can proudly say that that curve that everyone's talking about in the news, you essentially created it. Right? That red curve is the number of infected. That's the curve they're talking about in the news that they want to that they want to flatten. Basically, their models might be a little more complex than this, but it's not much more complex than it shouldn't be. All right.